there was a conference in Chicago in 1970 called the Congress on Opulent Population and the Environment, COPE. And again, to show the role of serendipity in all of this, out of this hundreds and hundreds of people there, I happened to sit down for lunch next to the Bill Paddock and his wife Liz. Now, Bill had written a book with his brother called Famine 1979. And uh, so I knew him, and he took a little bit of shine to me. And after the luncheon, we went up to his hotel room where we met with a number of the main people working on population questions. So this was a wonderful experience for me. Among the people who were in the room were Garrett Hardin, the human ecologist from the University of California, Santa Barbara, Willard Wirtz, who was, I believe, Secretary of Labor and was quite interested in this, and a number of the other main people working on population things. So I uh, started writing to zero population growth and saying, if you're interested in numbers of people, what difference does it make whether they're born here or whether they move here? It's still another person to be fed and cared for and so on. So they invited me to be a member of the national board of ZPG and to do the background papers on immigration policy. Because I was still practicing medicine when I was doing this. I had one of the biggest surgical practices in the state. So as I look back on it now, I don't know how I had the time to do all of this thing. I guess I didn't sleep much at night. So anyway, I went on to become national president of zero population growth between 1975 and 1977. And at that time, in our history, in the mid, mid to late 70s, the birth rate was already falling substantially from its post-World War II highs, and the migration rate was starting to take off. So it seemed like if we were interested in numbers of people, we should be putting some effort into this. Well, it turns out that immigration is one of the most sensitive topics in American political life, and it's also very difficult to graft new concerns onto old organizations, so it just didn't work. So coming up to the end of the 1970s, we had to decide either we would just abandon the issue and forget about it and go have a good time, or start up an organization that was dedicated strictly to working on this topic and all of its ramifications. So we started, settled on the latter course, and, Z, and uh, FAIR was open for business in January 2, 1979.